Uh, yeah, the first thing to think about uh, when you're creating videos, think about uh, what you want the students to learn from it. Um, so what, um, what um, aspects of the video is going to help that process? And I think that once you've got a clear idea of what you want the students to learn, then a lot of the other uh, questions about video, things like um, the quality, um, the length of the video, the, um, the, the type of setting, uh, and the uh, editing um, really comes from that. Um, for example, say you are wanting to do a video in um, a lab laboratory, for example, and you want the students to um, see some process. Um, once you're quite clear what that process is you want the students to see uh, and learn from, then the setting up of that video becomes a lot more uh, simple. Uh, for example, you need to get close-ups on to uh, the equipment they're going to be using. You need very clear um, ideas of the steps that the students are going to go through to learn that and so on. So I think uh, it's, when I'm working with uh, academic uh, colleagues uh, uh, using video, I always say, well, what do you really want the video to do? And sometimes, actually, when you go through that process, you realise that video is not what you want to do. There are sometimes other ways to, uh, for teaching uh, for the students or, or the students to learn. Um, but uh, certainly start with the, the um, learning outcomes is, is the way to start with video. Well, the students are coming now to uh, university um, uh, with a, a wide experience of multimedia. Um, children coming up now, my own children, for example, use uh, YouTube regularly uh, to look for information. Um, they find that uh, video is the, the, their preferred option. Um, my kids, my uh, oldest child is uh, uh, 13, the younger is uh, 10. And they will now go to YouTube, not Google. That's where they look for information. So they're becoming quite familiar with the idea of uh, video for, uh, let's say, for instruction. They also themselves, those kids, uh, and my children are not unique, they also create their own videos. So they are creating little pieces in uh, video and, and doing screen capture and so on. Okay? So they're coming into the university, into the college, uh, with an idea that media should be part of their education. Uh, and I think we in, 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 in uh, universities and, and colleges, we have to respond to that. Um, and not only it's to do with this, the students' expectations, I think the, um, we've moved to an area where um, we now have the means in terms of the software and the equipment to really do this. Um, so we now think in, 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 in my university of uh, both the uh, academics as media producers and the students as well as media producers. So the academics producing media to support and develop their own teaching. So they're providing the students with a, a wider range of material. Um, and that has an impact on the, um, the design of our courses. For example, we um, do much more flipping, for example, where we use media to prepare for um, live seminars and tutorials and things like that. Um, we use video to prepare for laboratory work and field trips. We use video to capture the results of laboratory field trips and so on. Um, we use, uh, the, the students themselves are beginning to create video more as part of their assessment. So they're using video as a means, uh, the students themselves are producing video. And that's really quite, uh, really quite exciting. And also it's getting involved in some other parts of the educational process as well, things like feedback for students. Uh, sometimes our academics are providing short video um, uh, video clips to, to explain uh, feedback for on exams and, and things like that. So it's becoming quite integrated. But our, our aim, um, so we think of the students coming in with this idea that um, uh, education could or should have uh, media, uh, you know, rich elements of it. Uh, we have the means of production to do it, I think, now. Um, so our aim is to make it just simply mainstream, just simply something that we do naturally. Um, that it's challenging, I think, for, uh, for our ac academic colleagues, for our teachers. Um, I'm, I work at a central support unit. We, we have to think very carefully about how we bring our academic colleagues forward. It's not something they can go from nothing to full media production. They have to go through various stages. And that's what we are thinking about in terms of our support, uh, about the kind of tools we offer, um, and, and, and ideas to help them design uh, video for the students as well. It's quite interesting. The, uh, as I say, I think the videos, are, uh, the students are uh, very uh, keen to, to, to access and use video, generally speaking. Um, we've been um, recording uh, lectures for quite a long time now, about five or six years in, in UCL. 
And lecture recording is a very sort of simple and, uh, in a sense, sometimes described as a kind of boring use of video. But what we're finding is the students demand that uh, more and more. Uh, and in fact, it's grown, going, it's grown like that over the last um, five years. That's mostly through student demand. So they want to see this type of uh, material. And in response to that, and I think this is interesting, our academics have now become more interested in providing uh, different types of video. So they see themselves on a lecture recording, and it looks a bit dull, so they say, well, what else can I do? What else can I do with video? So they sometimes then produce um, short video uh, clips themselves, and, as I just suggested, using video as a kind of feedback. Now, what the students say to that is they, um, they find, some of them anyway, find that a very effective form, because um, feedback generally, although as academics we like to say that feedback is very important to students, and it is. Students don't always read it, that's the problem, and video provides a bit more, uh, of more impact, it's more direct, if you like, and slightly more personal. And that seems to work quite well. It doesn't suit all students, though, and also it doesn't uh, suit all types of feedback. Some feedback has to be more detailed than you would want to do in a, in a video. But as a, general, as a general idea, I think it's well worth trying, and our academics who have tried it say the students respond quite well. So we've been, uh, um, when we think about video, I, I think of it in a number of ways. One is uh, the video itself, the actual the power of the, the image, the moving image. And, um, and that, that's very powerful in, in education because you can um, show things, if, if you like, which the students don't get access to uh, normally. Um, and we can, um, um, the, the, the image has always been, uh, you know, educational video has been around for um, 30 or 40 years and um, the idea of, um, um, uh, as I say, using video to kind of show things, um, um, processes and places that students couldn't get to normally is very powerful in itself. That's one thing. Um, part, we, we've also been um, using video to uh, just simply record some of the live events uh, that happens in a university, mostly lectures. And again, that's a sort of another type of video. Um, so that, that covers, if you like, uh, um, an, an, educa um, an educational performance, the, the lecturer uh, talking about uh, his or her subject. And that's quite important as well, that's part of, part of education as well. A number of things we can do with, with video itself, but what's happening now, I think, is, uh, is that we're, we're also thinking about the interactivity of that video. And a very basic type of uh, interactivity is students getting access to it. So our video we put into our virtual learning environment. Uh, we use Moodle. And the students can then go to a lecture, they can watch a lecture, and then uh, play it back afterwards. Okay? Now that's a big step forward in terms of education because what was originally, if you like, uh, a kind of a fairly ephemeral educational event, a lecture, is now something that becomes a learning object that students can then go and have a look at it. Um, and what we, what, we, what we know from the data is the students don't simply watch a lecture from the beginning to end. That's impossible. That'd be too boring for any of us to do. What they do is they go, they jump around, they use the, the tools in order to find the bits they found particularly interesting or particularly confusing, and they go back and play them over and over again. Um, and I think that's really important because the, what, in, in my opinion, what the students are doing is they are interacting with that material in quite a rich pedagogical way. They are interrogating that that, that, that video. So we've got from what can we do with the video itself to the point of video as a, as a kind of interactive medium, the students can go and use that. Um, and the next bit moving on is uh, video as uh, integrated, if you like, with the other uh, teaching and learning activities. So our media now, wherever it comes from, always goes back into our virtual learning environment. That's how we deliver it to the students. So it's not just simply a piece of video on its own, it's now a piece of video connected with all these other things within the virtual learning environment. So they can be text-based things, it could be activities, it could be quizzes, um, it could be discussions and so on. And that is really, I think, where the richness is in education. So you start with the video itself, and you can use that video either to start off a discussion, for example, the students can then look at a video, then discuss it, or summarise it, or decide which is the most important questions from it, that type of thing. Um, or you could say do a video and then do a quiz to see if you understood the video. Um, 
and so on around those areas. So that the video itself becomes only the centre of a whole lot of other activities. And what we are trying to do with our academic colleagues is to think in that way. You know, don't think just simply the video as a piece on its own. You know, with a beginning, a middle, and, and an end, a narrative. It's something that the students, A, will not necessarily look at from beginning to end. They may look at bits of it. And B, they can and should look at it in combination with other resources. Okay? And, of course, that can be done as a group. I mean, one of the nice things about video, it's a kind of visual thing, uh, we've, we sometimes get our students to look at things collectively and, and decide what, what that is. So that's, that's a sort of like the way that, that the video is developing. And, and as what I found is uh, uh, the process for our academic colleagues is we start with something fairly boring, which is a presentation, a voiceover, something like that. And when the academics, they sort of, once they start thinking about it, they think, well, what else can we do with this? What else can? So that's when they start thinking about creating these other types of uh, videos, supporting videos. Um, and then, of course, once you've thought about that, they think, well, okay, what about my students creating video? What can they do with video? Because the same thing, they're using the same technologies, you know, using the same cameras, the same software, using the same servers, you know, using YouTube or our internal software, uh, internal servers. Um, and then people start thinking about video as a way of assessment. So the students can start thinking about doing a project, whereas maybe five years ago they would do, well, they still do this, but they do like a, a stand-up presentation as part of a project. So they do a, a pro, um, they, you know, instead of doing a writing report, they do a presentation. Now, they may be able to do that, uh, or creating small videos. And the students love this type of thing as well. And um, so as well as making, um, you know, it, pr it provides another way of looking at a, a subject, another way of uh, looking at a subject domain. Also, the students gain these kind of transferable skills that they can then take with them into the future. Um, one of our academics, and, and some subject here is one of our academics was saying that the students are now expected to be able to do that sort of thing. You know, they're, they're expected to be able to create media as part of their professional uh, practice. And so, so, so we're increasingly moving into this area where we have both uh, academics and students as, as producers. I, I think um, um, there, are, there, are, there are many of them. There's, um, the first one is, uh, uh, is that they don't think about what is the pedagogical point of this, right? So they, they either make the video is too long or too much detail in it or the wrong type of focus, wrong type of vocabulary, that sort of thing. Um, that's the first thing, really, is, is to make sure you know what you want the, the students to do. Beyond that, there's all sorts of technical issues. Um, there are problems. The first one is about sound, um, and, and this is one we always say to people, is make sure your sound is, is correct. Because you can get away with uh, poor video, but poor sound people find impossible to, to listen to. So make sure the microphones and all that sort of thing are, are, are there. Uh, the next one is about lighting. Um, generally speaking, um, we're here in a studio and the lighting is obviously lovely. Um, w often our uh, academics shoot video in their, in their own offices, in their labs. And they have this tendency, and I'm not sure why, they sit in front of a window. So you've got the window behind... Yeah? And you've got this kind of silhouette <laughs> of the academic, and they'll sit there for an hour talking. If you can't see who they are, sort of thing, it's like it's very strange. I think the sound might be perfect, by the way, but we can't see them. So that's just, so get the, that's the first. Thing. And then, of course, there's things about framing and, and stuff like that. So you end up with a you know little little figure in the corner or too close in occasionally, but that sort of thing. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's sort of general things about sound, framing, light, that sort of thing we, we try to get people. And, but it's quite difficult for, to be honest, to be fair on our colleagues. As I say, we have the, we're in the studio here, but most of them don't have these kind of facilities. So it's quite difficult for them to get that kind of set up. And, and in, in our university, what we're trying to do is have more of these type of spaces. So you can just walk in, sit down, take your PowerPoints and just talk. You know, so everything's kind of organised for you. Um, but, I mean, I've seen <laughs> the videos where people they sit in their office and somebody comes in, or you know, students walk in, or the students knock on the door. That, that sort of thing happens all the time. But to be fair on them, that is the environment. Um, uh, that is the environment they're uh, uh, working in. Um, I think the other thing is um, that um, another mistake people make is to try to be perfect from the first uh, step. You know, they, they want to be like. Uh, Hello, I'm on the television, and this is me important. You know, and and what we, we say is, um, you know, be, be natural. And if you make mistakes, that is. Remember, the students are, are looking at you all the time, and probably have done for years. They know what you sound like. They know that you, you know, how fluid you are, and 
or mistakes and so on you make. So don't get too worried about that. To me, though, to me, though, the actual the actual point about this is that uh, as kind of I'm not really a media person, I'm an educational technologist, but I can provide this advice, right? And I know, I know, my academic uh, colleagues they often don't actually listen, right? They will say, say sound light. Framing, da da da, all that kind of thing. And they say, oh yeah, that's fine. And they often do, they make the same mistakes. But what we can do now is, is that the, the academics can do this, they can look at the output and learn from themselves. It's a sort of something we can do now because the technology makes it so much easier. Um, you can try something out. And I get this is what I really say to people try it out. What do you think it looks like? Is it clear? Can you understand it? Can you hear it? Can you see yourself? And then they go back and they do it again. So as in the older technologies, this was, that was very difficult. It was, you had to, they were expensive, they were slow. You had one shot at it, it was quite difficult. Now it can be a bit more experimental. So I say to people, try a little bit of video, try it out. Um, put it in front of your students if you can. And I think what I've seen is that people learn as they go along. And they learn very, very quickly. Because we watch, all of us watch a lot of media. And we've got very high... Um, What's the word? Literacy, media literacy. We, we kind of know how to read a piece of uh, media. We don't know necessarily how to produce it. But once we get into that cycle of learning, we can get to that level quite, quite quickly. And I think that's quite encouraging. I think once we, the, 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 if we think about the academics learning, going up this curve very quickly um, through their own experimentation and learning. And that's what I found. And, and they can get to quite good levels quite quickly. Um, yeah, interesting. The, um, one of the things we're trying to do is get our academic colleagues to be a uh, socially networked. Um, because um, where we are now, I think, is we're moving into the mainstream. We've seen vi videos part of our mainstream teaching and learning. And it's very difficult for people like myself in the centre uh, to support that. Moreover, um, Academics are doing things with video that uh, are kind of beyond our experience. They, they are experimenting with their own uh, disciplines about what they can do with video. Uh, to support that, I think, in a sense, we have to have a kind of a, a social network. I would like to see our academic colleagues speaking to each other about what they're learning and, and, and ideas that they are sharing. So, so social, in that sense, is about um, academics sharing their own practice. And, of course... Video is such an accessible um, medium as they can show things to each other and say, look, this look quite, here's a good idea, this worked quite well, and so on. So in that sense, of social aspect, I think that's a way of supporting the development of media and education, it's the academics, really, speaking to each other and showing things to each other. Um, possibly the same for students as well, um, the idea of students um, also learning from, from each other. And again... We've got, um, in, in, in our institution, we've got um, a big push to the students as, as producers, not simply of media, but of research-type outcomes. Of media is one of them. It's very hard for us even to imagine how we can support students doing that. You know, we've got 40-odd thousand students. How do we support them doing that? The only way we can think about that is through uh, social networks, that they, they support each other to some extent. And I think that's quite possible, because the students are uh, much more used to that and they, they, I think they will, they will be able to use that to support them, themselves.